Hi guys, it's Jay Halva here and today I'm going to be giving some unpopular K-pop opinions. This is going to be detailed um, opinions and not one sentence or indirect or anything. These are going to be detailed opinions because I have some. I'm not getting a chance to finish editing the collab that I have with my sister because you know, there is still quite a bit left even though it's almost done. But besides that, I have a ranking video, a short ranking video. I will upload that too. I'm just making this because you know, this is a speaking video. And most of the time I just have to speak in this video and also I can have some content up because I haven't been posting for a few days. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you sub to me because I'll be releasing more videos soon. And I hope that you are respectful in the comments to these opinions because a lot of these opinions that I have are actually pretty harsh opinions and you know they are actually my opinions are getting a little bit worse day by day but I hope that you enjoy this video nonetheless. So without wasting any time, let's get into the video. Now we're starting off strong with the first opinion. The first opinion is, I feel like most people pick the idol as the best at something because of their popularity. What I mean, like for example, when people say Lisa is the best dancer in K-pop and you know, they praise her for dancing and stuff. I feel like people, you know, call her the best dancer in K-pop mainly because of her popularity and because, you know, she's the dancer in Blackpink. Of course, she's an amazing dancer in Blackpink and is the best dancer in Blackpink. But in the whole K-pop industry, I don't think she is the best dancer as there are people who are more skilled than her. So I don't think that people do this, but I feel like people, they, you know, call Lisa the best dancer, not all K-pop stands, but like, just most K-pop stands, I feel like they call Lisa the best dancer mainly because of her popularity and that's why they say that she's the best dancer in K-pop without actually knowing if she's actually the best dancer in K-pop. Now I'm not saying every K-pop stan does this or if K-pop stands actually do this or no, I'm just saying that this could be a reason because you know Lisa is popular and she's one of the most popular members in Blackpink and because she's the dancer in Blackpink that people say she's the best dancer in K-pop and it could be that her popularity is one of the main reasons that people say she's the best not because of her skill or anything. Now I'm not assuming that people say this again, I'm just saying because uh, her popularity could be one of the main factors that people say this. So the second opinion I got from a discord server because someone was chatting in that discord server and they were talking about the strengths and weaknesses of an idol. So I gave my own opinion and this is just my opinion, your opinion can differ from mine. So they were talking about how idols and groups have strengths and weaknesses and I agreed. And I gave my opinion that people fight over which is the best group in K-pop like for example one person says twice is the best group in k-pop one person will say blackpink is the best group in k-pop one person will say bts is the best group in k-pop one person will say 21 is the best group in k-pop etc etc but in actuality this is my opinion there is no best group in k-pop for you or for many other k-pop stands a certain group could be the best for them because it's their personal preference and they believe is the best but in actuality in the whole k-pop industry there is no best group like even though there have been iconic legendary and memorable groups whether boy groups or girl groups who have promoted and disbanded or who are promoting now none of those groups are you know the best at everything even if you take normal groups that are not iconic and legendary but are still popular or if you take groups that are underrated, none of them are the best. As this person said, idols and groups have strengths and weaknesses and I agree. Because take four groups for example. One group could be having amazing stage presence. The second group could be having amazing vocals. The third group could be having amazing dance. And the fourth group could be having amazing raps. And all four of these groups have distinctive qualities about them. The first group, as I said, stage presence the second vocals, the third dance and the fourth rap. Now one of these four groups will not have all four amazing qualities. Sure they have uh, the stage presence to do it, sure they have amazing dance, sure they have raps and sure they have vocals. But they are not so amazing that they would be counted as the best because every group is talented and every group has talented members but not every group is the best or not every group will be the best. Each group has their 
own strengths and weaknesses and that is okay so there is no best group in k-pop there is no number one top amazing group in k-pop you may think that this group is legendary iconic and memorable but that doesn't mean they are the best that just means they are you know iconic memorable and they can do it sure they can dance well sure they can sing well sure they have amazing stage presence they have rap but are they the best no because they have weaknesses in other points like rappers have weaknesses in singing if they are not born with a singing talent singers have weaknesses in rap if they can't do it and you know people who aren't the main dancers and all in the group could have problems in dancing if they are not born with it or if they you know aren't that good at dancing so no group is amazing or best and there is no number one group every group is like you know on the same level and nobody is amazing some may have more skills than the other and some may have less skills than the other every group and every idol has strengths and weaknesses so the next opinion is that k-pop will be just fine without big groups now the reason why i say this is because i was on a k-pop show and they said k-pop songs you kind of don't know is a disbandment song and in that k-pop short they were listing groups that had comebacks and then after the comebacks they disbanded and there was this comment that has 1.3k likes currently i believe so and in that comment it said in my opinion this world and even the world of k-pop will never be complete without bts twice and blackpink and there were many people agreeing with this commenter and even though i understand why people agreed with this person's comment and i understand why they were agreeing i commented in a disagreeing way not because i wanted to be rude or shady or harsh but because i wanted to be honest and why i disagreed with it now the reason why i disagreed with this commenter is because without bts twice and blackpink k-pop will still be complete and just be fine so k-pop wouldn't be worldwidely successful like it is now with many k-pop groups doing these fun challenges and games on these youtube channels and you know um these K-pop groups doing American interviews and shows and stuff. Sure, K-pop groups wouldn't be doing that. But they would still be doing the small, small Western promotions that they did in the past before K-pop became, you know, super globally known with more and more groups going. Like if you look in the past, before K-pop became super globally known, there were groups like Wendy Williams having Wonder Girls perform Nobody on her show, David Letterman having Girls' Generation perform The Boys on their show. And I believe Girls' Generation won an American Music Award or something for... Um, I got a boy. I believe so. I'm not sure. And I believe I'm not sure about this one either. That Shiny was the first K-pop group to have an album on the Billboard charts. And then, you know, Crayon Pop promoted or did something with Lady Gaga, opened up for her on tour or something. So there were K-pop groups before this worldwide, globally known K-pop phenomenon uh, that were doing these small, small things in the West. And without BTS, Blackpink, Twice and other big groups. Or without BTS, exactly because people say... And, you know, a lot of K-pop groups say that BTS paved the way for many groups, right? And I believe so. So, without BTS also, K-pop wouldn't be globally known. But they would still be doing these small, small promotions in the West. And, you know, K-pop would slowly be going to the West. But without BTS, Twice and Blackpink, K-pop would still be complete. Because if you look in the past, there were many groups like Wonder Girls, Girls' Generation, 21, Girls' Day, Kaya, 4 Minute, etc. And these were popular groups. And they had their spotlight in the past. And now that these groups have disbanded, there are other groups that have come forward in place of them who have taken their spot as being popular in K-pop. And once BTS, Blackpink, Twice and all disband, there will be other groups taking the spot in the popularity section. Not worldwidely popular, I mean, but like, you know, in K-pop popular, meaning popular in their home country or popular in their home country plus some international fans. So with BTS, Blackpink, Twice, you know, um, disbanded or stuff like that, K-pop will still be complete. So this person shouldn't say that K-pop will never be complete without BTS, Blackpink and TWICE. Because without the big groups promoting now, other groups that have just debuted that are getting slowly popular would take their place on the popularity scale. Because as I said before, many popular groups that promoted from 2011 to 2017 those groups disbanded and other groups that came after them in third gen and fourth gen are taking their place and groups that will come forward will take bts blackpink twice red velvet um 17 tease and all these popular groups this place and will be the popular groups of the current generation that will be going on in the future so without bts blackpink and twice k-pop will still be complete because other groups will be filling the holes of the popularity of these groups and they would be taking their space as popular groups. So K-pop will continue to be 
complete and kpop will only be incomplete when these groups disband until a new group will come in the popular group's place to take the spot as a popular group so kpop will be complete without these big groups and kpop will still be thriving and nothing will happen and you know it will just be life so the next opinion is that no you did not stay in the same hotel as stray kids now the reason why i say this is because i was on everglobe's community post man i love her channel go sub to her she deserves it she makes such good video essays and you know opinion based videos and i watch her videos a lot so basically she posted a community post that said i stayed in the same hotel as stray kids and i saw vujin slap mino or something like that there was this comment she screenshotted she cut the name off and she posted on a community tab basically it was saying that this person stayed at the same hotel as stray kids and basically saw vujin cause harm to one of his members and it's funny because if stray kids ever stayed in a hotel in korea or in the west or in any country they are so big famous and they make so much of money that they would be staying at a posh hotel and you know a hotel that is super expensive so for this person to say that they stayed in the same hotel as stray kids is funny because number one they are probably your average everyday person who can afford a nice hotel but not as nice as stray kids or any big celebrity that makes millions of millions of money and if they did afford it they would have to be rich and they would have to be you know earning a lot of money continuously this person saying that they stay in the same hotel as stray kids is funny because i don't think they could even afford a night in this hotel and even if they did they'd be broke by the time they got home so no vujin did not bully his members no vujin did not cause harm to his members no this person did not stay at the same hotel as stray kids because they cannot afford it so what this person said was lies and nothing of what this person said makes sense the next opinion is that i hate hobgoblins mv i know i've said it a million times that i don't care about mvs but clc's hobgoblin mv was really bad the reason why i don't like it is not because of the camera quality or anything but because of how much effort was not put into the mv Hop Goblin was CLC's most popular song and the fact that their MV is not that you know well thought out and well put into effort like the other MVs is kind of sad to me and that's the main reason why I hate it because it's basically just them in this one warehouse type of shed or something and the camera just you know keeps turning around and around 360 degrees in them and then there's some scenes where they're dancing in a different place with like some sort of a color effects and all on them besides that there is nothing special about this mv and it's kind of stupid to see how poor in you know creativeness this mv was i don't care about mvs and i don't care if you know the mv is really low budget or you know has less props and stuff if it comes from a small company but if a big company who can afford to make a expensive mv an expensive mv i mean and has the budget to you know add thousands of props and spend a lot of money on the group why was in hop goblin put that much effort into in the mv as it was in the song hop goblin is one of my favorite clc songs and clc is the main reason why i like girl crush and they are my alt group when it comes to the girl crush concept they are not my alt group in kpop but just my alt group in the girl crush concept so seeing how bad and poor in creativeness the hop goblin mv was was really sad to me because you know they have other amazing mvs with different scenes and so many props but besides that the hop goblin mv was really poor in creativeness and i don't like that So the next opinion I have is that I don't like when K-pop stars make polls and videos about collabs they want to see between western artists and K-pop idols and K-pop artists. Now let me explain before y'all get all mad in the comments. The reason why I don't like this is because I saw a community tab of a K-pop shorts channel and they were doing a poll in the community tab and basically they were like what kpop x western collab or something you would you like to see and there were three options the first one was rose and halsey the second one was jungkook and harry styles and the third one was um txt and jason derulo now i commented none and the reason why i commented none is because none of them fit musically together now the reason why i hate people when they make these posts community post or videos about potential collabs they want to see with kpop idols and western idols the reason i hate it is because these people they don't check if the artist that is the kpop idols and the western artists fit musically together or if the music styles or voices fit together all they do is they put these collabs together number 1 because the kpop idol did a cover of the song and number 2 
they would think that the collab would be iconic and break records and become super popular these are the two main reasons these people they make these sort of posts and they don't really like you know see if the voices fit together the music fits together or if you know they fit together musically i understand if the k-pop idol has said themselves they want to collab with certain artists then making community tabs like that would be amazing but like if you're just making community tabs on potential K-pop X Western collabs you want to see just because the idol covered the song or because it would break records and be popular is kind of dumb to me because people should at least do research and see if these singers fit together musically and if these singers go well together. Now for the community post that I saw, I commented none because Rose X Halsey don't go well together because their music styles are different and the music they release is different. For me, I think that Rosé would fit well with singers like Alicia Carr because they have the similar sort of music style and Rosé would fit really well with Alicia Carr because they have such nice unique voices. Then for the Jungkook x Harry Styles, I don't think they would fit that well together because, um, you know, Harry Styles music is a bit more upbeat and sort of a vibe and even though he has beautiful music and stuff i don't think he would fit that good with jungkook jungkook has a more beautiful sounding voice and he's more fit for like you know ballad songs or you know karma songs or chill songs or more beautiful songs and i think he would fit really well with toy kelly and yes he did do a cover of paper hearts but i fit, think he would fit really well with toy kelly because their voices match together really well and you know they both have such nice clean beautiful voices that a collab with them would be so amazing to hear and it would be really heavenly and for the txt it's jason derulo one no i wouldn't think they would fit together because if you put jason derulo with txt or give jason derulo a txt song he wouldn't fit songs like loser ex lover or i know i love you or run away or crown because his music is more upbeat and you know sometimes his music is a little bit sexual i don't know but like his musicality and his music styles wouldn't fit txt and i think that txt would fit more with the disbanded boy group one direction and their music would go well together like if you give txt songs like best song ever or what makes you beautiful or kiss you those songs would fit really well with txt and if you give one direction songs like loser x lover and i know i love you featuring siori and crown those songs would fit really well with one direction because both these boy groups have this sort of rebellious vibe with to them and stuff like that so i think that both these boy groups would fit well together so in conclusion k-pop stands should stop you know trying to put artists that is western collabs with uh, k-pop collabs potential collabs they want to see unless they actually think that these artists fit musically together if they don't fit musically together then they shouldn't put them together unless they actually think that they fit musically together their voices fit together and stuff like that so the next opinion is that why do people act like listening to k-pop is amazing but listening to western music is a sin like i've seen many k-pop stands make videos where they talk about you know their favorite western artists and songs and then they joke about how they betray k-pop by listening to western music and it's really annoying to me because um they find listening to western music a sin and bad and feel like they're betraying k-pop but they okay when k-pop groups and k-pop soloists release english versions to their music and release original english songs like take for example twice is more and more's english version and twice is the feels so why do people act like listening to western music is a sin and they're betraying k-pop it's honestly the most stupidest thing to me for me i listen to k-pop and western music both hand in hand and i don't you know feel like that I'm betraying K-pop by listening to Western music. I got into K-pop in 2016, then left, and then came back in late 2017, early 2018, and now I'm a full-fledged K-pop stan. And before K-pop, I have been listening to Western music since I was born, in the year 2000 I was born. And since from 2000 up until 2016, I've been listening to English music, then as I got into K-pop and continue listening to K-pop, I still listen to Western music. I listen to popular Western artists, underrated Western artists, popular K-pop artists and underrated K-pop artists. And I don't care. And I listen to both music simultaneously and I don't really, you know, feel like I'm betraying K-pop by listening to the Western music as these k-pop fans say and joke about i also listen to other languages as well as long as they're good so i don't really care about language i just listen to the music as long as it's good 
Now on my channel, I make many different videos. I've made two parts to my favorite underrated and underappreciated English songs. I have to make a third part, but I'm too lazy. I make videos on Asian language music and Asian groups that I've discovered. I've even made a video on my favorite Pakistani songs since I'm Pakistani. And I make K-pop content mostly, but I like my channel to be diversified and, you know, have these different videos. I make these Western music uploads because I want people to know my favorite Western songs and artists and that they could add them to their playlist and listen to them. I don't really care and I don't really feel like I'm betraying K-pop by listening to Western music because I was listening to Western music way before K-pop. So for people to say and joke about, you know, I'm betraying K-pop by listening to Western music. It's not funny. I'm not laughing when I see this and it's kind of honestly stupid and childish and people need to stop. Even if they're joking, they need to stop with these jokes. It's kind of really a bad joke and it should stop entirely. So the last opinion of the day is basically a video I got from the KTuber Shigo's video. Shigo did a video where they reacted to unpopular K-pop opinions from Reddit and one of the opinions on that Reddit post that said K-pop is losing its meaning and the person explained by saying that you know there are many non-Asians debuting into K-pop, K-pop artists aren't even singing in Korean anymore and you know um, uh, K-pop is trying so hard to stay relevant and they copy western music and this and that and that Redditor's post made me so annoyed that I wanted to add this opinion in my own opinion and this is basically me reacting to that opinion and giving my own thoughts on it so credits to shigo for adding this opinion in the video this is shigo's video opinion and yeah so basically that redditor is literally uneducated on k-pop and basically that redditor who said k-pop is losing its meaning and gave this dumb thing that you know they don't even sing in Korean anymore. They're debuting many non-Asian idols and la di yada yada. This is complete and utter garbage. I'm going to be talking about the exact same comment that I commented. I copy-pasted the comment so I could read it out for this opinion. So basically in my comment, I said, K-pop isn't losing its meaning. People are too focused on the popular groups and soloists and some well-known groups and soloists that they literally forget about the millions of K-pop songs being released in full Korean by K-pop groups and soloists who barely passed 1k views, 10k views, 50k views, 100k views, 500k views or barely reached 1 million or who passed 1 million views but are still unknown. For example, Skyle which is a girl group and Luminous which is a boy group. People forget about the K-pop songs releasing every day who are being distributed by music distribution channels like Music and New, One the K, Stone Music Entertainment, Genie Music, Flexwag, Kubiko Music Channel, Denal Entertainment, Orgam Entertainment, Riak Official, Super Sound Blug, Bugs, Blending, etc. and more that I cannot remember. People need to realize that there's more to K-pop than just Chunga, Jesse, EXO, Icon, Winner, CLC, G Idol, Huna and other groups and soloists etc k-pop is not fully made up of that small portion that people listen to this person has no right to say that k-pop is losing its meaning it's not people just don't check out smaller company or unknown artists from good small companies with really low views they only focus on the more well-known k-pop artists and generalize about k-pop like no do your research i would know because i check out any artist that comes my way big or small so i can generalize because i know a lot more artists than your average k-pop stand so that's why hearing this opinion made me annoyed because this opinion is dumb because most people think k-pop is made up of groups and soloists that are mostly all k-pop stands no one listen to and this is what i said in that comment now this person literally as i said has no right to say that k-pop is losing its meaning if they only know a couple of soloists and groups that are popular like most people as i said in this comment that i read out most people only focus on the popular groups and soloists so they generalize about k-pop they generalize by saying you know uh, noise music in k-pop is getting bad they generalize by saying this year in k-pop is boring they generalize by saying third gen boy groups are bad they generalize by saying fourth gen girl groups are bad they generalize by saying this generation who boy groups or girl groups were bad and people have no right to say that if they only know a couple of handful of artists and soloists that are popular and well known instead of knowing more than that instead of knowing a lot of underrated ones as well to make this assumption and generalize about k-pop they cannot generalize if they only know a handful of artists and soloists Love is alive.